Hello everybody and welcome back to Astrology Victoria. Today with your host Tatiana, also broadcasting for ANN Archetypal News Network. And today I am bringing you the astro weather for the second half of May, May 15th to May 31st. And I recommend you grab a chamomile tea, take a few deep breaths, and let's dive in because the energy is still very intense. I went a little bit MIA <laughs> for two weeks. Several reasons. The eclipse on May 5th was really impactful in my life. Like seriously. And I would like to talk about it. Because I did not give you a preview video. But now in this video I would like us to reflect on that eclipse a little bit to understand its function and the repercussions of it in the next months to come which have to do with what we're doing in the month of May. If we can make it through April and May with peace and alignment we're golden because then another intense period will come in October. So these are turbulent times Times where changes are inevitable, fears will come up, up, anger, fears, frustration, not knowing. It could go into complete craziness if we are not able to hold our presence and trust that every single thing that is happening is for our highest good as a, as a species in evolution at a personal level and at a, at a collective level. And this is why it's so important to not lose our minds right now because many people might be, might be affected and we'll see who, who in particular might be in crisis mode. This doesn't mean everybody's in crisis mode because it also depends on how your chart is displayed. So this video might be a little bit long. I hope I won't make it too long, but I recommend you stay until the end because I will give you the tools and solutions to the energies that may, may be completely crazy and the crisis that you might be moving through, if it is your case. Um, so you know a little bit at least what to do, have a little guidance and come into a little peace if this is you and if on the flip side you are somebody who is very balanced at this moment you're not being hit by these uh, very strong evolutionary forces then you're the one who can hold space and energy for others that are going through the ringer so this is also for you to be aware how you can support those around you who are completely in despair okay so let's dive in i will share the screen um, okay, how can I make this a little bit more nice? Full screen. There we go. Ta-da! <gasps> Lots of alignings happening. Um, This is our little overview. So mark these dates. Just because in these dates, energy tends to shift, to move. So we're going to have finally Mercury going direct on May 14th. We will have the entry of Jupiter in Taurus on May 16th, which in itself is a huge thing because Jupiter moves through the zodiac every 12 years. So as it enters Taurus, it will stay there for a whole year. And if you know what was going on in your life 12 years ago and 24 years ago, you can do that math and go, what was happening 12 years ago in my life when Jupiter enters entered your Taurus house so if you don't know where you're not sure of what house is or what your astrology chart looks like you can always contact me and I can give you a reading and help you move through these things and understand um, all the information is in the description below so when Jupiter enters Taurus there's going to be um, a massive shift in our or basically a opportunities will present themselves in the Taurus area of your life. The opportunities of growth. Taurus is the is what grows. That's why in Taurus season we have plants growing. That's when the garden is beginning to grow. 
<laughs> we plant it in Aries, it starts growing in Taurus and the garden starts developing. So everything that grows, that we want to grow in our life, this is a great time. This is a year to grow that area of your life with Jupiter moving through it. Um, and we'll see the implications of all the other energies that are happening at the same time so that you can grow who you truly are at a soul level. If you're not focusing the energy on growing you as at a soul level, your love, what gives you pleasure, what gives you connection to heart, then these times may seem very confusing. And we'll see why in a little bit. So this is a little bit overview of that. When Jupiter enters stores, there could be lots of opportunities. Let's remember that Jupiter expands everything it touches. It gives it a boost. It's like Santa Claus. It brings gifts and opportunities. But it's up to us to, to, to take those opportunities and turn them into gold. If we just stay like numb or overwhelmed by all the other things that are happening, then the opportunities might be missed. You know, it's very easy to miss the opportunities when we see, oh, this is coming to my life. Maybe this is where I should be going and not be afraid of moving there if that's your highest soul calling. Because Jupiter will make sure you have the resources, Taurus is resources, the resources to enact your soul's desires. So as everything crumbles and the illusion of what we think is valuable to us, which is money and little numbers in the screen uh, or a paper with a printed head on it and a number. If, if we have been confusing the value of things as the capacity to have, uh, like let's say money is an exchange uh, currency and money, are just a ways of exchanging but they're not the value and this is going to be very important in these times since the eclipse on may 5th all the way i mean basically this six months it's the value of of what is valuable to our souls and how we add value to life and the world and those around us it's going to be always supported by the energies bigger energies at play if we're still stuck in thinking that value comes from some numbers and some papers and we forgot that value comes from our soul and what we share what we give from our hearts to others that add to our communities that add to the world what is it what is valuable in you is what this whole process is about this whole crisis process that we've a lot of, of us have been going through is to redefine your soul's purpose, what gives you joy, what gives you pleasure, what you are that can insert itself in the collective. So this is why this Jupiter entering Taurus, May 16th, will kind of kickstart this in the middle of a crisis of deconstruction, in the middle of a tower moment. And tower moment, I don't know if you know, in the tarot, the tower card is when everything's just falling apart and you don't understand why. So in the middle of a tower moment, there is this huge opportunity for new growth of your soul. So stay present with that. And this is, well, obviously, this um, this time as Jupiter enters stores, there will be a square to Pluto. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But what this means also is that there might be these desires of might make it right, you know, kind of thing. Uh, excesses, you know, of, of like dogmatic excesses. I know the truth and I'll fight for the truth. And instead of allowing the slowness of life and the surrender to soul to guide the path, it's not about you. And in this video, I am very tempted to title it <laughs> the battle between the ego and the soul it's either one or the other one will prevail hopefully the soul as the ego dies and the ego will struggle but it is necessary because this is a, a massive evolutionary shift we are going through all of us as an earth and if we're not aligned with soul 
it's kind of doomed. Again, the control by the ego, our ego needs desires, is it's what will doom the process. The trust in a divine guidance and just being an instrument of the divine, aligning and say, what does the divine and love would do right now? What is the feeling in the heart that brings the energy into a sense of gratitude, connection, compassion, and love, and that we move from that space, trusting that we might not know what will come out of this. We cannot control it. Control is of the ego. I want to know exactly how it's happening, when it's happening, how it's happening, what the outcome will be. Like That is the ego, and that's what's dissolving. <laughs> so if you're still in that, caught in that, I would strongly suggest you release that okay so we'll have a new moon in taurus may 19th that we will analyze deeply with all that i already said there's a lot of it already in the mix mars entering leo uh, may 20th all of these are shifts in energy and the there will be immense energy in the fixed cross basically the fixed signs taurus uh, leo aquarius and scorpio and there might be such a resistance to evolving but it's inevitable. So <laughs> um, if you have any points or planets in the fixed signs, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, this might be impacting you very strongly. The resistance to change because the fixed cross is fixed. It's fixed energy. It's like we don't budge, right? So if that's you, hold on until the, you see the rest of the video and see how we can move through this. And finally, May 21st, Sun enters Gemini, bringing a lot of freshness and newness to our experience. So I will not discuss all the... Look, look at it. It's packed. All these aspects are happening. <laughs> well, if you are really astrology savvy and you want to look at this for one minute, this is insane. Like the amount of transits, energy dynamics the sky is extremely dynamic right now and this is why ooh, peace calm and slowness is required and that's the energy of taurus saying please for god's sake slow down we can't process the whole universe in the speed we can't connect to soul and spirit in the rush and the panic it's an invitation. So yes, it's very dynamic. So if you're astrology savvy, this speaks to you. If not, let's move on. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that eclipse on May 5th and my personal experience with it. I thought like, nothing can touch me. <laughs> you know, I'm good. I know life is fine, right? Um, <laughs> but sure enough, I do have points and planets at the eighth degree mark, the ninth degree of of Taurus and Scorpio so very very close to the eclipse and that gave me a little bit of a whack essentially what I've been seeing in many people also I know is that there has been a financial crumbling lots of investments tanking things that you were like waiting and holding on to holding on to to finally give you the big payout and we're putting value there. Poof, I'm seeing this crumbling in many different ways. There's different financial systems, institutions that are right now struggling. And this is part of that eclipse having Uranus so close to the eclipse. The eclipse point obviously being 14 degrees 58, right? And what happened here was this great shakeup. And because Uranus, as it moves through Taurus, is shaking up the foundation of our resources, our money, financial systems, value, poof, 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 and everything that eclipsed with that obviously showed a little bit of this, this crumbling of that um, idea that money, what I said before, is the value. It's what's crumbling. Money is not the value. Money is a way, a means. For those of you who were impacted by this and the fear of loss, the loss of freedom as well, because this eclipse had uh, Pluto in square to it. The eclipse was, was square. Pluto was squaring the nodes, basically squaring the eclipse and saying, 
you need to detach from something. If you want freedom, which is Pluto in Aquarius, you need to detach from old ways. This is Scorpio. Release, poop out. The systems that don't provide value to life or anything. Hoarding, you know, when you hoard, 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 hoard. This is mine, this is mine. And then what are the value you're providing? How are you sharing your value with the world? And I don't necessarily mean money. I mean what you do, what your soul wants. And if you're not aligned with that and you're just hoarding, Pluto flushes, flushes you out. So things to consider. <laughs> things to consider. How are we being attached to ideas and ideals that are of the ego and not of the soul? <laughs> so this eclipse shook up a lot of people I know who the, literally the panic of we are losing everything. It's almost like the death. Pluto here is imminent. We're going to die. We're going to die because we can't control it. And I, yeah, a lot of people I know went through these depths of despair, including me for one day. May 4th was that day, just one day before the eclipse as this energy was ramping up. That's of despair. So I, I will lose everything. I, I will have nothing. And then how am I going to survive? <gasps> Panic, fear, fear of death. And then eclipse passes and we go, wait a minute. What do I have right now? What do I have in, in my present reality? What is there? What is valuable in me that I can always keep sharing? And what does my heart connect to? Suddenly there's this evolution, this beautiful thing that happens when we connect. There's peace. So the question for me was about, I don't want to lose my freedom, right? Again, I have to employ myself in something I hate because I've been working so hard to gain financial freedom so I can be free, finally. Free to do what? To do my astrology videos, to share my gifts with others that don't pay money or whatever the belief is attached to that, which is also something to be released. Beliefs around the fact that something you love to do it's not that it's not going to be paid and that's false there's always going to be exchanges coming back to you so for me it was it's a fear of okay i'm gonna to have to do something nine to five or something like that and i'm like no 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 <laughs> above all please no and that realization gave me the capacity to think about what is freedom what is the freedom of the soul is the freedom to enjoy and be happy with what we have, to be at peace with knowing that we are divine beings that are provided with everything. Have you actually lacked a meal today? You know, did you not have a helping hand of somebody with a lot of compassion that say, hey, don't worry, I'll help you. You see, in these times of crisis, this is when the immense compassion comes into play. And then we see people around us. They don't hate us because we're not at the top of the success ladder or whatever. People who truly love us will see us in any, any, any level of our emotional journey and will love us still. That is the divine way. And that is the way that will show us new opportunities and new beauty a new grace so this eclipse could have marked that starting of more of the crumbling of those ideas and beliefs around money and value and resources money is not the only resource that exists resources are everywhere in a seed resources are in my capacity to share something again of value i know how to dance and I, somebody's looking for dance well, I'll show you how to dance. Then you're happy you're dancing, right? <laughs> I know how to sing. I'll show you how to sing. Sing with me. I'm giving you value in your soul, right? So I know how to read an astrology chart. I will help you and guide you through what I see in the stars. I'm giving you value, right? And then what do you give me back? Oh, maybe you, I don't know, you know how to cook delicious food. And I don't know how to cook delicious food. And you bring me a dish. You bring me a soup, right? It's as simple as that. And the Taurus energy is simple. It's back to basics, back to simplicity. And this is what we are being asked as well. It has gotten so complicated. And tax time, right? This is also the same time as taxes were due. 
um, at least here in Canada, uh, April 30th, tax due, you're paying massive amount of taxes. And I was like <gasps> paying all these taxes and saying, okay, by releasing this money, this is going to make somebody happy somewhere. I can let this go. You know, we tend to be very attached to our money. And let's face it, we all are. <laughs> You know, we just want to hoard it and keep it because, well, it gives us a sense of security. But the only sense of security that is guaranteed is the love in your heart. That's the only place of absolute security is your connection to the divine unknown, the divine will. Anything else, it's the ego wanting to control. It's a big one, people. Big one for me. And I can be super spiritual in tune and whatnot, but we're all we, we all go through it. And let's not lie. We have to be brutally honest with 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 that and with ourselves. And this is where the true transformation can happen. So now moving on to these two weeks, because that eclipse could have set up in motion a bunch of stuff. Now, next these two weeks. So again, we say Mercury is going direct. While Mercury was retrograding. We had the opportunity to to look back again at what is valuable, how we're dealing with, dealing with our money, our resources, our capacities, um, tying loose ends, maybe shifting things around, like not starting new things. Hopefully you kind of cleared maybe even your debt because this eclipse was all about giving and receiving. Where have you had debt or are people owing you or wh what are you owing still? You know, this is all part of that eclipse that happened in the Taurus and um, Scorpio axis. Anytime we have eclipses there, there's something related to giving and receiving or that's why debt and taxes and all of that kind of falls under this because that's where we need to square or balance out where we have not been balanced. If we have been taking too much, we'll need to put out if we have been over giving or over sharing then maybe it's a it's time to look at how we can balance that and receive more or be open to receive so all of these things are part of that right where have we been uh or the beliefs around the fact that maybe only giving 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 it's the right thing and 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 not acknowledging that we also need to receive so beliefs Lots of beliefs around that could have been crumbling, especially our obsessions around money, because um, when Pluto was squaring, um, still squaring Mercury, there's like be obsessions around the theme of resources and money and the fear of losing. You know, it's, it's, it's terrible, right? The best thing is to go into it and say, what do I have to lose? I'm alive. I have, I have limbs. I have capacities i have a beautiful mind i oh wow so as um to so this days may 14th may 16th like i had talked already about jupiter entering taurus and how this is a big time as you can see well obviously here jupiter will enter taurus may 16th 17th depending on where you are on the planet and then we'll have a big big taurus stellium so let's look at that stellium uh i'm gonna make myself small again kind of up here i know i always show this image this is back when ai was not creating all the images that was when i was still creating images so <laughs> my taurus image this is what life wants for us right now to acknowledge the feminine to acknowledge the fact that forcing and forcing is not going to bring us what we want force and strength and ego and ego desire and drive will not bring us this it's surrender that will bring us this it's taking deep breaths being slow and connecting to the ways of the feminine the ways of the feminine are not go 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 they are inward they are strong like a tree, like this tree. Taurus is stable and strong and slow. It seems like it doesn't want to move, but there's a reason for that. If you go and walk around and, you know, the spring is so beautiful. Did you go already today or these past days for those who are in the northern hemisphere? Have you stopped to look at the flowers or is spring just passing by and then, oh, flowers are all gone? 
did you stop and actually see the little flowers, the tulips, the cherry blossoms? Have you actually stopped five minutes to look at a tree? Or is it, oh, pretty tree, let's go, keep going. My life is so important. This is what the energy is calling for. It's calling for this slowness, this connection, so you can actually eventually get what you want. But what you want is not what the ego wants. It's what the divine will wants. So if you align with what the divine will wants for you, that is what you want for you. And then you will find it, but you can only find it in the slowness and the calm and the silence. You won't find it rushing out to try and fix it. Um, so let's look at the next image. Okay, let's talk new moon because this is kind of the echo of that eclipse, this new moon in Taurus, right? It's the opportunity after having reviewed <laughs> all of what's come, what was crumbling. Okay, what is new? Oh, Jupiter entering Taurus is going to conjunct or it's already conjuncting the North Node. Uh, at a three degree orb so jupiter north node there's something telling us that there is a different way there is a new way there is a new pathway just be open to receive those resources um obviously it's still going to be very unstable with uranus in, in still moving through taurus we still have years of instability but this is why as systems crumble new systems emerge um I have been looking into some new decentralized banks that deal with crypto. Yes, that could be one way. But what I'm sensing is there's going to be so many new systems of exchange that are decentralized from crypto, because we know we're in an era of air right now, since the grand conjunction, the great conjunction of uh, Jupiter-Saturn that propelled uh uh, an Aquarian, oh, I mean, an air area, a, a era where a lot of the things are going to move through the intangible. So yes, it will move through money might not be tangible, but it's all going to be about energy moving or, you know, at a maybe lower level, all this AI and quantum computing and things like that are going to be part of our, of the expression of soul or the expression in this world. And at another level, the highest expression definitely would be energy exchange, how we exchange energy and how we learn how to direct energy to manifest. That to me is the highest way of dealing with that. But in the meantime, the matrix world has other things like, yeah, like cryptocurrencies and new banking systems that are decentralized, that are not governed by a governing body or a country. And as Pluto is retrograding as well, because right now Pluto is also retrograding and it will be retrograding for um, for a while. So as, as Pluto retrogrades and it dips back into Capricorn, we will still be seeing more of why the elites and those who hold all the power and the money and the resources are are just crumbling down. So new systems that are more aligned with the Aquarian view of freedom, financial freedom, uh, freedom to be who you are. And that means you need to have your resources, again, Taurus, covered. If you cannot have food and a shelter, then how are you going to express your soul's desire? So there's many new things coming. There are new things emerging from, I know here where I live, there is this initiative to do a, a local currency called the Tetla. Tetla box and it's very local to this community where I live and is is based on trust it's based on well if I can provide this service and we will exchange this new kind of system it's a system of exchanges there are also apps coming up there's in the area I live in there's an app called revillager app from some some people in a farm that developed that app for a while and in that app, the idea is to have a network of people that exchange services. I offer this, I need that. In 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 the local communities here where I live around uh, uh, around Vancouver Island, and this app wants to reach further revillaging around the world. Maybe you exchange a service at the other end of the world and with somebody else. So you see these are localized systems that are not centralized, that are not controlled. 
I'm involved with this uh, thing again, a first decentralized bank um, that deals again with crypto a little bit more in the matrix uh, called um, GS Partners. And it's like, well, they have their own version of a metaverse and, and how to move uh, ex uh, economic resources or what people have to offer, like an, like an Etsy or an Amazon platform where there's, it's a marketplace but that just deals with this internal currency and so on and so forth. I know Facebook will learn, launch their currency and so on. So like everybody's doing their decentralized thing. So it just doesn't matter which one it is. Just know that that's happening. To me, the highest, again, the highest expression will be how do we manifest? And this is going to sound, this is woo-woo alert. Woo-woo-woo. All of this is great. It's part of the illusion of being embodied in a third dimensional existence. But as we evolve, manifestation occurs in the way we learn how to move and manage energy from within, soul energy, which is not about the ego driving it, is about is about listening to the divine. And acting from that place because it gives you inspiration, in spirit, inspiration. It gives you, it gives you inspiration. So, when we have inspiration, we are in spirit, and the heart opens up, and you just act from this place, and you can create from this place. That's why the secret and all of these things, you know, that say, oh well, if you can dream it and put energy into it and feel as if it already happens, yes, this is how it works. the The energy is directed by shifting the frequency you exist in, just by shifting it. But that can only be do be done inside yourself. That cannot be done outside yourself. The outside world is a manifestation of you directing it of your frequency so the task is to go inside and and understand who you are as an incarnated body and what forces move you inside that's the trick that's the magic and that's how then you can manifest things that you you won't believe like oh the whole world is collapsing the money is going i lost this i lost that and all of that is still the ego and the fear of, of death is the ego wanting to die. But the soul is eternal. Soul doesn't care about things or money or, you know? And that's going to be the gift also of this period. There's those two things. The gift is comes with that realization. If you have not yet realized that, well, I suggest you start delving into you. You as the creator of everything you see around you, including your situations and even the people. You may say, yeah, but I have no control over this because the world's doing that. Well, you do. If you create a different frequency inside yourself, the experience you will have is different. And others will create different experiences for their world. But your universe is yours. And it could be a peaceful, happy one. What do you believe? And this is part of this thing is... But what do we believe for ourselves so we can create? So in this new moon, let's look at those things. We have a fixed cross. This is what I was talking about between Jupiter, Mars, Jupiter, Pluto, Pluto opposition, Mars. And then we have um, the, the, the south node. So we have this like intense energy here. The nodes pulling from the future to the past, from the release to the give, and then the anger. You know, Mars, Pluto can bring anger, and it's the weights of the masculine is just go and take and force and pillage. This is what I want, and I will have it no matter what. And Jupiter, Pluto, might makes it right. Right, it's like it's what I want, but I believe there could be some crusade energy here. It's what I believe to be the right thing, then I will enact it because I'm the leader. You know, there could be these energies, these energies either because there's some kind of revolutionary movements that is like this is the way of the people and then we fight. That could be one. Or this is this is like the gurus, you know, but the time of gurus is falling apart as well. 
people that that put themselves up as the figures of authority and the figures that um represent truth um so where are you getting caught up in that is going to be a good um question because that energy is the ego energy what i was talking about that's the ego Rawr! and the other energy the supportive one that requires to listen and to tune in and surrender look at this we have a trine of mars to neptune so this mars neptune trine means that the divine will the will is mars the action but neptune if you're aligned with divine will you'll just act from that space but how can you listen to that space if you're just caught up in all your little fears around survival very difficult now we have mars sextiling this new moon and neptune in sextile so this is the mars sextile new moon sextile uh neptune brings the capacity of this new moon the sun and the moon and neptune to align soul which is the sun your purpose what you're here to shine as with the will but these are sex styles so if you're not taking the time to look at yourself and go what does my soul truly want then it's very hard. You won't see it. You might get caught up in the rest and just miss the opportunity. Sex styles are there to say, hey, look at this and dig the gold. And then we have the trine of Jupiter, uh, sorry, of Pluto, wanting to transform us from the bottom to the sun. So when Jupiter, uh, when, why do I keep saying Jupiter? When <laughs> Pluto is shining the sun, there is this enormous capacity to see our fears and our deepest attachments. So if you're brave, you will go there and see what is stopping me from enacting my soul's desires. What fears, what beliefs, what do I need to release? Maybe it's that job, maybe it's that money, maybe it's that thing, maybe it's that greed, maybe it's, who knows? What is stopping me? But then if you can face that fear and transform yourself from the inside and go, okay, this needs to die and this needs to go, or these attachments need to go, then you have an enormous breakthrough into, okay, this was my ego desiring control, my ego desiring um desiring this but maybe my soul has a different plan and if i align with it all golden so you see these are the energies at play and we have saturn sex styling mercury on this new moon this gives us the capacity to focus our mind so you know what meditation focus you know discipline maybe it helps us plan something it's good for planning it's good for having some maybe you're going to plan the new new way of having resources maybe this is the time where you plan uh your heart your your garden maybe this is because of taurus energy or maybe this is the time to plan how you're going to manage your new your new incoming resources or what you have maybe this is the time to plan those new systems or plant those new seeds that will bring you in the long term because Saturn plans things for the long term. And again, Saturn in Pisces is how are you focusing your energy and your intentions that are aligned with divine will? How do you do practical spirituality? Not woo astrology, uh, a spirituality that has no substance in real life. These are all those questions. How are you applying your spiritual tools? And this is the time to do it, not to talk about it, to do it. So you can also focus your mind and your intentions. Very good time to focus your mind and your intentions and surrender. You can ask, I surrender. So this is the exercise. I surrender to divine will and I will just breathe. You know, Taurus is very simple, like I said. 
Connecting is so simple. It's just like walking on the grass. Yesterday, I was raking the grass. And I decided to rake the grass walking bare feet. That, that's that simple. And what happens? Nothing. There's peace. Raking grass, walking bare feet. Simple. <laughs> and you may say, yeah, but, but I don't have time for that. There's all these things that I have to do that I want to do. Like, precisely. That's the exercise, my friends. It's going back to simplicity. Breathing. We all have a machine that breathes. Breathe. Slow breathing. That is one of the most powerful tools that has ever been given to us as spiritual tools. Is breath. It's free. But no, we're so busy. I don't have time for that. Why would I stop three minutes to breathe, right? Why? Oh, I don't have time to breathe. You know, it's just happening. No. Conscious breathing. This is the aware person, the conscious person. Because, and this is exactly the, uh, I, my AI friend, <laughs> I do use the AI tools to create what I feel the archetypes could bring. This is that square, that, that grand square or grand cross. So if you have any places, placements at, at the, the, those degrees of the fixed signs, basically um, the first degrees of Leo, of Aquarius, of Taurus and Scorpio. Oh, my dear friends, the last or the last degrees of the cardinal signs, Libra, Aries, um, Cancer and Capricorn. That's a lot of people. If you have any points or placements there, planets, angles, you will be feeling this. The ego. This is the fixed cross going, I want this. This is the way I need it. But it creates, you're like, you'll have it no matter what. And then there is this sex styles going, okay, there's everything burning. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn you down to ashes. Because Pluto is the phoenix. Let you become the phoenix. So yes, it's burning. It's hard. It's terrible. It's, it's horrible. The world's crumbling. But then open up to that world that lays beyond. And it's beautiful. And it's graceful. And it's a world that you don't control. You can't control. Because the divine is way too big for us to even understand it. So don't even try to understand it. Just surrender to it. And say... Come, I'm ready to receive this. I will receive the divine inspiration that lies in me. So you don't need to live through this. But it is your choice. Remember, this is choice points. Whenever we have <laughs> the nodes involved in anything, they're evolutionary choices. You can choose to still remain in this. And that's fine. That's the, Your world will look like that. Or you can choose to go, I surrender even while I'm burning. Yeah, I know. Meditate on this one for a little bit. And as Mars enters Leo, like we see this this cross moves from the cardinal signs of, is it all me? I, I want this or I have to, to be a martyr and, and just give myself uh, not even exist or... Or my desires are not don't take are not taken care of. Like there's all these energies. But then when the fixed cross moves into uh, when the um, this cross, the cardinal cross moves into fixed cross, then there's the locking of horns. Then this is like I won't budge. This is my truth. This is what I want, and I won't budge from here. So the resistance to change that you might be experiences could be could be huge. So for instance. You might be projecting out into the world this. So basically, you attract to yourself situations, people, or circumstances that force this change, and you will have immense resistance if you have placements in the fixed cross. For you, this might be very, very difficult. What to do? First of all, know that if you resist the change, it's going to be worse. No, that if you allow the opportunities to come in, Jupiter, 
in that area of life in your chart, look for them. And three, surrender and go and say everything is going to be okay. Whatever happens is going to bring me something better that I don't even know what it is. And I can trust that it is something better. Otherwise, you stay here locking horns with yourself or with others, which is worse. Sometimes it's I don't budge, you don't budge, and then conflict and, and difficulty, power over, might makes right. It's my way or the highway, or I know the truth, you don't. This is the right way to do things. And that will only lead again and again to the same cycles we've been living on this planet forever, which have created a lot of of lack of freedom because we've been seeing that a lot of our, our world is based on slavery and modern slavery. You know, we think ancient slavery was bad. Well, what about modern slavery? Being slaves to jobs and money and things like that instead of listening to what makes your soul happy. And uh, we're all slaves in a certain sense. And And if we go back to similar alignments that were happening back in the when the times of the French Revolution that's where Pluto was in Aquarius last you know it was a big time of emancipation and people's saying liberté égalité fraternité you know like freedom equality um, fraternity you know it's like freedom values yes that's what Pluto wants to show us that we can be free so yes there's big civil movements and things going on and if we're still prisoners of our beliefs, prisoners of a system, prisoners of, of expectations of others, then we're never going to be free. So take a hard look at yourself, Sun Pluto, during this time and see, okay, where have I given away my power as a soul? Where have I given in to others' expectations and desires for me well you should do this this is what is good for you no you know what's good for you truly in your soul and your heart and it feels like an expansive feeling so when you connect here and you visualize yourself living what you most love to do you will feel feel like a, an expansive sense here the way to differentiate between what it comes from the heart and what comes from the ego is that the ego, you will feel the energy in your body lower. You will feel it like a, oh, I want this, like more like a drive. But if we feel it from here, it's like, oh, I just, I just have to do this. I love it so much. And I don't know why, but I just have to do this. You know, it's a different feeling. This is why the Taurus energy also invites us to tune into the physical body. Taurus relates to the actual physical body. So if we're not in tune with the body and we're in the mind too much, just thinking, I like this, I like that, but we're not sensing where the body's saying, eh, no, that doesn't feel right, then we're missing one of the most powerful tools. So I told you, first tool, simple breathing, second tool, observe your body and the subtle changes in your body when you play out a scenario and if it feels wrong weird mm, constrained mm, that's not the way if it feels expansive beautiful <gasps> exciting that's the way simple that's how intuition works and i know we're all learning to develop it me included right so it doesn't exclude me it includes me i'm learning to develop intuition at a deeper level and that's the way of the feminine if you wanted to know that and the last thing that will carry us through the month is sun entering Gemini. So when the sun enters Gemini and leaves the slower Taurus, the sun still will be, obviously on May 21st, it will make this exact trine to Pluto. So these are beautiful times to, and again, to do maybe some kind of therapeutic work, you know, get your power back, your power, your soul power back. And take it lightly. Gemini is light. Gemini it is fun. <laughs> Gemini is playful. <laughs> it just wants to see opportunity and see that nothing is that serious. You know, <laughs> I yesterday I was walking, I was meditating on a bench and then we see this 
otters. There were a family of five otters. I know there's so much to do, right? Everybody was also focused on work and what needs to be done or whatnot. And then the otter medicine said, otter comes to your life to show you that life is a game. Life is meant to be joyful. And you see otters, are they thinking about how much fish they have to catch and when they have to be where at what time? No, they go through the flow of the current and they're always playing. They come in and out, they catch their fish. They go in this little family, you know. And it's this like when we allow joy and playfulness and we share that with others, then we are in a vibration that supports more of the divine, more of that. So I'm going to leave you with that, with the otters and the playfulness. And whew, all of this, this, this Grand Cross is still playing out all throughout the month. So just be brave, deal with it, you know, be strong. There is one other little thing I wanted to mention um, is that Venus, it's, uh, was it Venus? Uh, Venus. Yeah, the Venus Chiron. This Venus Chiron square might bring up the wounds of the feminine and the why we have not gone towards what truly gives us pleasure. You know, Venus, it's in Cancer at this time. And as Venus is in Cancer, it's, it's connected to to the sense of of it's it's the emotions it's venus in cancer gives us the love of home of family the love of our temple our inner temple and when it starts squaring chiron we might feel that and this will go on a bit further in the month and into june but that we will have a chance to address the wounds of the feminine, why we have not been able to allow pleasure in our life. Because we're deconstructing these very young energies of, of might is right, and you know, especially with Mars in Leo is, is what I want, you know, and I'll go conquer. Um, and on the positive side, the Mars and Leo, it's a little bit of the diva saying, well, this is what I want for me. And that's, that's what I'm going to get. And, you know, everybody should like listen to me <laughs> or something like that. But the Venus is asking us to go, okay, fine. You go for what the ego wants, but what about what gives you pleasure, true pleasure. And pleasure is not the hedonistic pleasure, it's the, it's the, it's the fulfillment pleasure. It's a very different pleasure. It's not the addictive pleasure. It's the pleasure that when you do something that you love, you just get so energized and you're just so happy. Like me doing this video, I love astrology, you know? Yes, exactly. That's what I'm leaving you with. This was a very, very, very long video. And I know some of you might have dropped off, out, but if you stayed until the end, thank you. Because you got all the picture and hopefully all the tools and hopefully all the understanding. And I am being very Mercury and Taurus about this video, meaning... I'm speaking really slowly, <laughs> not like my usual self, so that this message comes across really clearly. And you can go and ponder of that in that, especially if you're in crisis mode, or you can support somebody that is in crisis mode. Okay, I love you very much, and I will see you in the next video.